Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Alter Quest from Blacklist Games. They're just now delivering their Kickstarter and as you can see we got a couple different things here to show you. We got the base game right here along with all of the stretch goals which is in this very large box here. We have the Runes of Arkinspire expansion that we'll be going through as well as just some extra dice here and the first four heroes box, which we'll be showing you. And we'll be going through each one of these individually. All right, so we're gonna go through the main box first. Again, this is Alter Quest from Blacklist Games. It plays one to four players. It's a cooperative dungeon delver game. It's actually supposed to be a, a sort of a spiritual recreation of Hero Quest from uh, the Sadler brothers who have done Street Masters, and Brook City, as well as games like Warhammer Quest and Heroes of Terranoth. So they're pretty familiar with these style of games. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got inside. Aside from being a Dungeon Delver style game, this does use the modular deck system that the Sadler Brothers use in Street Masters and also Brook City. So it's also got a little bit of deck building to it. So here is our rule book. So this game can be played as one-off adventures, or you can also string quests together into campaigns. But essentially what you're going to do is you're gonna choose whatever decks you want to accomplish. So you'll choose a threat deck and also a villain deck and a quest deck. And that will basically comprise your your one off. And then of course, if you want to play a campaign, you'll go through several of those. Here's our campaign rules here in the back. and a nice little summary on the back here. All right, so here is our story guide. So I'm not gonna go through much of this. I mean, you see the first few pages just for a little introduction there, and then it goes through chapters. Again, I don't wanna go through too much of this, but this is what I'm interested in. These story guides and the campaign, that's the way I like to play these games. So I wanted to take a quick look at that. We've got our punch board for our different little resources and reminders. I think these are our focus tokens. All of this punches out pretty well. They're double-sided. They look nice as far as I'm concerned. And they're nice and thick. So those all look nice. We got more of that. We got our stairs where we'll start each story. We got a couple couple pieces up here. I believe these are lurkers. These are sort of random encounters you can have in a dungeon. And if I'm not mistaken, there are actually figures for these in the stretch goals. So these will end up getting replaced with figures. But again, all this punches out really well. We've got little trap tokens here. I also think these get replaced with minis. So we'll take a look at that when we get there. Money and damage tokens, pretty standard for this style of game. More status tokens. We've already seen all of these. So here is our game board. Let's go and take a look at this real quick before we get into the rest of the game. So whatever you're playing, whatever quest, villain, what have you, it's all on the same game board, which you can see here, fairly large. So a lot of different rooms, everything's color coded. You can kind of see here the inspiration they've taken from Hero Quest. It's kind of got the same vibe as the Hero Quest board. You've got some arrows here in each room. Those tell you where to put a feature. Whenever you go into a room, you also got spots for doors. There are plastic doors, but they're also on the board. Basically they're closed until you interact with them. And then you'll put a figure out saying that they've been inter interacted with and the room is open. All right, so let's go back to our box here. So 
down here, we've got a little spot which looks like it comes out. Excellent. And here are all of our cards and our dice in different things we need. So here are our character dice, and we actually got an extra bag of those. We bought those separately because you always need extra character dice. You always need extra dice in general. So it's good to get them as early as possible. So here are our character dice. This is, again, the focus icon, which we saw earlier on the little chipboard. Basically, if you roll this and you have this resource, you can spend this to turn this into a success. And that is a success. And that is a success and a focus. And then somewhere on here, uh, this one is a critical success, which as you would imagine, if you're familiar with these style of games, let you roll an extra dice. So it's kind of like a, um, Exploding dice, I think is some game calls it that. It's a pretty common mechanic. And then here we have the altar dice. So it's called altar quest. So of course, of course there are altars in the game and the altars have these different elements associated with them. So you can see there's a little bit of a marbling effect on the dice, which is kind of cool. Uh, these dice are really nice. They're well inked. I don't see any sort of errors or anything like that. So that's nice. But essentially what you'll do at the start of the game is you'll roll all of these dice and that'll assign these different elements. And it looks like we got every element, which is, I'll probably never do that again. Um, so you have the wind element here and then you have, this is probably fire, I'm assuming. And what these dice essentially do is that you and the enemies can activate special abilities based off of the elements on these dice. And whenever you do that, so say I activate a special ability as my hero using the fire element, I've got to now roll that die. And of course it changed to a different element, but you can also kind of mess with these dice in general. So that's how the altar dice work. Everything else in here is cards and there's a lot of cards in the game. So let's go and go through these. Looks like we've got some other stuff on the bottom here, more of this and some colored rings. So I believe these are used on the enemies to sort of differentiate them. These are little just rubber rings that'll get put on the bottom of enemy bases. So we have several different types of cards in the game. Let's see what we've got. So here are villain cards. So when you start a game, you're going to choose a villain. Right, so you may choose Bulks here. And he's gonna have his own deck of cards. And when you start, you're gonna have a villain card out on the board on its scheme side, and it'll have some flavor text, and then it'll have things that this card will do on the enemy turn. The villain, I should say, has his own turn in the rotation of the round. So while this card is out, this will activate on the villain turn, and this effect will go off. Whenever the villain is spawned, he'll come out onto the board, he'll be a figure on the board, and then this card will flip over. And now you actually have to fight him. So this is defense value, this is health. 9P means nine times the number of players. Playing a four player game, he's got 36 health. This is range. So basically this effect that he has here will go nine spaces, which seems like a lot probably gonna hit everybody. So that's a little look at villains. Here are quest cards. So when you choose a quest, say you wanna do out of Luxon, you'll have this whole quest deck. And whenever it tells you to draw a quest card, you'll just draw one and then it's different things as you can see. Here's actually the rule card, which will be put out to tell you how you win. So before you begin, read the instructions and the story guide during the campaign setup, add this deck to the campaign pool. Players should not look through this deck. Well, we're gonna break that rule real quick because I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna show you everything, but if you wanna pause, if you care that much, there's some cool looking stuff in there. All right, let's put that to the side. Here's one of our heroes. It looks like this is mostly her deck. So, yep, here is our hero card. So here's one of our hero options. Again, defense, health. Here are the stats that your character has. I don't 
exactly remember what each of them are. I'm pretty certain red is strength and orange is fortitude. I think greed is agility. And then whatever the other three are. Uh, range, again, and this is for this specific skill, but this is your character card. Whenever you start a game, you're going to get all the equipment that's in your character's deck. So she'll start with this blade, which gives her another action and also an exhaust ability. And she'll start with this shield. And those will be out in her play. And then she'll have the rest of this deck, which you'll draw, I believe, three or four at the start of the game. And these are things you can do on your turn. An action card is something you can use. Basically, during your activation, your character has three separate actions. And one of the actions you can do is to play one of these cards. And again, they just have an effect on them. They have a range. Here's some ongoing ones. Looks like these stay out. More action. Here's feet cards. So you're going to make a test. So you're going to test that stat which if we go back to her character card, we know is three. And we're just gonna test that by rolling three dice. And if we have a focus, we've got our three successes. And this says, if passed, he'll do da two damage to an enemy within range, within range, within a range of one, two heal, two damage. And then you can also use it on your turn to heal one damage. So you won't, I believe you won't begin with all of these. I think the yellow ones are your starting ones. So you'll start with these and then the rest of these cards, I believe you'll have to buy, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you start with the white and you have to buy the, the yellow. But the, essentially characters have upgrade cards. So they start with certain cards and then they have cards that they can acquire throughout the course of a campaign. Let's see what else we've got here. Let's see if we can find the other heroes. Here's one. So here's another hero option, Quella, who has no defense and 12 health and all her stats. And then her deck, again, equipment. So she'll start with this one. And again, look, she has an ability that just lets her roll two altar dice. So she can mess with the altar dice just from the start. There's her attack card and then her actions. We'll just go through those a little bit quicker. She looks like a spellcaster which makes sense. But there's Quella, second character. And here we have equipment cards. So equipment cards are things you can find and acquire throughout the course of the game. Obviously, if you're playing a campaign. And again, it's equipment. So if you acquire it, in the first quest, when you go to the second quest, it'll start in your play area because it is equipment. Now I'm hoping that these cards will fit back. Uh, okay, that is not going to accommodate sleeve cards. If you like to sleeve your cards, there is definitely not enough room in there. So search cards, whenever you take a search action, You'll draw a card from this deck and you'll find things like potions of healing. Looks like a lot of potions. Ancient scroll, quick roots, blinding powder. Eyes in the dark. That's a bad one. All right. So yeah, that's unfortunate that that's not going to do uh, sleeve cards, but we do have at least these little organizer tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and open these up so I can start doing this. All of our different card types. So here's our equipment cards, put a little organizer there. So that's helpful. We've got enemy upgrade cards. So just like your characters can upgrade, so can your enemies. Gain extra health, gain armor. Okay. Altar cards. So this is, I believe, the type of altar. So whenever you start a quest or a, a story, you'll select a certain number of features, and those will be things that'll come out onto the board as you explore. And one of those features will always be the altar 
And I suppose this is once you find the altar, it'll tell you what type of altar you have. Got thralls here. Well, here are the feature cards that we were just talking about. So there should be, yeah, so there's an altar in here. And basically what you'll do is at the beginning of each game, you'll take out the altar card, you'll select a certain number of other feature cards, and then you'll add the altar card somewhere in that deck. So as you're exploring the dungeon, you know the altar's in there, you just don't know which card it is. I couldn't have done that again if I tried. We've got thrall cards here. So here are our minion cards. Again, these work the same way as the other cards we've seen, villains and, and heroes. You've got defense, health. This is the range of their ability on their card. And then you've got their movement value. So when they move, they move a certain amount. You also see that they got different colors. And again, I believe these represent the different rings. So when you are playing with gargoyles, you'll take out the four gargoyle monsters, and then you'll put a ring at the bottom of each one. So if you draw the red gargoyle card, you know to place the red gargoyle. So you know which ones, you're basically just keeping track of which one's gonna activate. So here, these are all our monsters, gargoyles, crimsons, uh, feral mothers. These are traps, as you can see. And these are events. Let's see what else we got here. Got hunt cards. These look like event type cards. Lurkers, there's always a deck of lurkers whenever you start a game. And these will be just monsters that come out essentially. I believe if you run through the event deck, you always draw from the lurker deck and lurkers as you just saw are always monsters, whereas event cards can be occasionally beneficial things. So it's kind of like a timer to the deck. So more monster cards here. So this would be one of the decks. So like we were just looking at the thralls, these are the same type of deck. If you choose to do raglanders, you just shuffle this whole deck. And if you choose to do the thralls, you'd shuffle this whole deck. We got another hero here. So Rowan, who I believe is the rogue. Or I guess he's a trapper because he starts with a trapper's rope. There are only four choices for characters in the base game. Although obviously with all the stretch goals and the specifically the first four hero set, we've got additional options there. So there's another character for us. And then here's nice little cheat sheets kind of explain the game to you. So again, heroes get three actions. You'll have little tokens in front of you that you'll flip over when you take your actions. And you can move, play a card, interact, draw cards, rest. And then at the end of your turn, you're going to draw a card and then flip over your turn card, basically saying you've gone. And then once all players have gone, you've got a threat turn. Each hero resolves and activates cards in front of them. So like monsters will get activated if they're in front of you. Then the villain turn, which activate the villain turn, and then the quest turn. And you'll continue going like that between heroes and the other turns until you either accomplish whatever the objective on the quest you chose to play is, play, or somebody dies or you run into a, another failure. So here's another one of those decks we we're looking at. So Thralls, the Raglanders, and now the Vrocks, which is another one of the, I believe these are the threat decks. That's technically the term they use. So this will be, at the start of a round, you'll, you'll choose one of these to start with. 
We have here some allies that you can get through the course of the game. These are the four characters. So that's interesting. You can get them as allies, I guess. And here is our last hero, Cedron, his deck. I believe he's the cleric. So his starting equipment, the Star of Aluna and a Steel Mace. So that's all four of our starting characters. Got a few more decks here. Let's go through these as quickly as we can. And then we can show off the miniatures and then get to the stretch goals. Let's see what's in there. So I believe these are the quest deck. So when you start, you're gonna choose one of these quests. So you could choose to play the escape, right? So here's all the escape cards. And then it tells you the setup for that quest and then it tells you basically how to win that quest. And you'll be drawing and re resolving cards from this deck as you play. And again, another quest there. Here's one of our other villains. So why Nora? And again, she has a scheme side, which they start on. And then once the that villain actually spawns, she's got her villain side. Take a quick look at her cards for you. Obviously a vampire. That's just creepy. Okay. And then our other villain, Gert. His scheme side. And then his encounter side. And his encounter cards. Here's another quest, the showdown with our setup card. And then the search, another quest. So I went ahead and got all the cards situated, all the dice put back in and organized. There is you can see there's sort of a void underneath the cards, which I suppose is where you're supposed to store all the punch board. Um, that's, that's a little too chaotic for me, so I'll probably find a way, another way to do that. But that's all the cards at least put back into the little holder, and it does work really well as an organizer that way. So last thing we have in the box are our two containers with our miniatures. Go ahead and take a look at them. So we've got a whole bunch of doors. Again, the doors on the board are their closed version. So here you're only gonna have the open version of the door. These don't move or anything like that. We've got enough doors for the entire map. Then our monsters, starting with our gargoyles here. It's a nice sculpt. I like that the pedestal has some, you know, chippage and interesting aspects to it. Now, there aren't a ton of miniatures. This is a good number of miniatures. Um, but I, I wish they had included a reference card as far as where each miniature goes. Just to make picking up a little bit easier. That's our first container there.
little frog sorcerers. I do like the fact that they did the different types of units in a different plastic. So you notice all the bad guys are in this dark gray, whereas the good guys are in this lighter gray. And then we have one of our bosses here, our villains. I guess he's giving piggyback rides. And then sort of all our terrain or our, our features are in a, a middle gray. A couple interesting things here. We got a mushroom patch. Here's our altar itself. So once you actually find the altar, you'll put this out. This is, I believe, a fountain. We got our treasure chest, which is probably what everybody's hoping to find. A mirror. And then probably my favorite one, the bookshelf here. I just, that would be very difficult to paint, but Worth the trouble, I think. It's got a little bit of a gap here on the bottom, which isn't a big deal. All right, so that's everything in the base game box. Now we'll switch over to the stretch goals. All right, moving on to our stretch goal box. But first, let's do this little first four hero box that we have over here. I like new heroes. So the original game only comes with four heroes. And obviously by the name of this expansion, you can probably tell this adds another four, which is nice. I like having a lot of selection when it comes to heroes. All right, so we got, looks like a story of our first fours. And then just an overview of what's in here. We got some new tokens. Again, punching out well. I'm guessing we have a bard in here and somebody who lays traps. And then uh, looks like we've got an Illuminati character. Nice. Oh, here are our figures themselves. So they do add new organizers, which is very helpful. I'm hoping that these, by the time we get through all of this, everything we have will fit into the organizer for the base box. I will go back and kind of see if that's the case at the very end, but it's nice that they give you organizers. We've got our four new figures. His, he's got a little bit of warpage on that sword. That's really easy to fix if you've never had to do uh, any sort of altercation to plastic miniatures, just get some hot water and put the miniature in for a couple seconds. It doesn't take long and it will just soften that piece right up. And then you can get it straight and then put it in some cold water and that'll keep it that way. This one actually comes out really well. I like the, the trident look. That's very cool. And then our cards. I wonder if they expect you to just use this. They probably do, but I'm hoping it'll fit into the base box just to save some space. So Gavin Ulrich, let's see. It's his character card. So you can see his stats, health, 
his abilities. And let's go ahead and look at, again, equipment starts in the game. This is obviously a two-handed sword because he says he can't have an offhand, offhand item with it. And then he's clearly our Illuminati guy because that's the same symbol. And then his abilities. Clearly a paladin of some sort. Next we have Avith Nomura. His equipment, his trident, also a two-hander. Willow Banks looks like our bard. And that's only the end of her deck. So go to Karen Herrick. And she comes with a reference card. Okay, so she starts with the snare tokens. Also starts with a crossbow. And then the rest of our Bard's deck must be in here. So Melody Tokens, here's our character card. Let's see what these Melody Tokens do. Okay, so the Melody Tokens basically allow you to act as if you have different elemental runes without actually having to be on the board. So if you didn't roll a flame rune, for example, and you want to use one, you could instead just use one of her melody tokens that she can hand out. And you can see how that's useful. So, because we haven't talked about this yet. So this action, choose a hero within range, that hero may move up three spaces and gain a melody token as long as they're within range three. If you have this element showing on one of the altar dice, then each hero within range gains one armor token, as well as this top part. Now, obviously, if that is on a rune die or an altar dice, you'll have to then roll that altar dice. But her melody tokens let you just act as if you have that, even if you don't. Obviously, you're going to be discarding the token after you do that. But you can see how these elements affect your different abilities. So it's a useful thing to have, obviously. So one thing I have noticed between this box and even the last one, the main box, is there's not really a consideration for these tokens. Um, first of all, this barely fits. Like I feel like I'm almost to the point of maybe bending those cards, trying to get that in there. But it does technically fit all in there. Of course, that's not going to fit anymore. So. I'm guessing this is just for the tokens. Otherwise, it was poorly thought out. But there's no real, if, obviously if the tokens go there, that's where these would go. But otherwise, there's there's no real consideration for these. In the base box, there was kind of that one void underneath the card organizer, but that won't even fit all the tokens. So I'm not certain what their plan was or tokens. It, it kind of seems like they weren't paying attention. But let's get to the stretch goals. 
So obviously this is, this might actually be slightly bigger than the base box. Uh, they clearly hit a lot of stretch goals. So let's see what we got inside here. I'm guessing we got a, a rat and a, uh, a bird guy in here, which would be kind of cool. Let's see. All right, here's our contents. We got some extra altar dice, 135 more miniatures. Wow. 400 cards. It does put in its, its expansion icon on some of them, so you know. Okay, and obviously a new board because we got a new board here right on top. Let's go ahead and see what our new board looks like. I wonder if this just comes out on specific quests or you just choose which board to play with. So it may be the, the hero quest nostalgia getting to me, but I prefer the original board. So this one seems to be organized much like the base game. We got our little card organizer here, which is gonna pop out. And then we've got a couple trays of miniatures. Looks like we got three trays of miniatures this time. Yep, there's a big one at the bottom. Let's see if we can get that out without dropping everything. Okay. Again, doing just a printed sheet that goes underneath the plastic with a picture of all this so you can put it back in at the end of the night would have gone a long way for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these guys. Got a Plague Doctor Scarecrow, maybe? It's very interesting. These, I believe, are traps. So these will replace the traps in the base game, just a little punch out. So in the base game, you just have these, right? So you draw a trap card and these tokens get put out on the board for that trap card in the four different colors. And if you have this expansion or these stretch goals, I guess, you'll get these figures for each trap. And then there should be some additional bases. Yes. So. We've got additional bases here that you'll put on to each figure to denote their color. So more traps here. So spike pit. I'm guessing that's a fire trap. Let's see what else we got. Some type of eggs. Got some banners here. I believe this is a trap. We should have cards for each of these in, in this expansion. So we'll get to see those a little bit more clearly when we get there. We've got, I believe these are allies. So not new characters, but just allies that you can acquire while you play. Let's see what else we've got. I'm just gonna take a look at a few of these. Just whatever kind of catches my eye. Got a werewolf. That guy's cool. Some sort of satyr goat man with a big old axe that's on fire. That's excellent. I like that a lot. There's our little hulk guy, bird guy, that was on the box. Very cool. A 
another little goat person. So here, um, I'm guessing these are heroes since they are in this light color plastic and usually the heroes are. That is a horse or a horse person. Werewolf hero, clearly some type of archer because he's got a quiver. Let's see what else we got. We got a fire guy. It's interesting. I assume he's a boss. Obviously, they did him in orange plastic because he's fire, but uh, so that doesn't really tell you if he's a hero or what what have you. But I'm gonna assume he's a boss. This is a boss. Very jacked rat guy. Jeez. What else have we got in here? Some type of cultist. And then we've got some new features. That's obviously not a feature. That just really cool bird guy but here we got features so we got a cage here does it actually work no it doesn't actually open that's unfortunate got a new altar i believe so in the original in the base game once you found the altar you would then draw an altar card and it would tell you what type of altar it is or somehow there's a, some mechanic that Gives you a specific type of altar. These are all of those altars. So they kind of give you figures now for those different types of altars. That one's really cool. That's probably the fire altar. Very interesting. That just looks like a mound of stuff. All right, so there's all our figures from our stretch goals. Another thing that I know is in here, uh, but I don't know specifically which ones they are, are all these sort of people from the base game. So in the base game, you had all these little punch outs for these different people. And these were either lurkers or event cards, something like that, that would put out these people. Now you have figures for them and they're somewhere in there. I just don't know specifically which ones are which. So here we've got some new altar dice. So instead of the regular altar dice where everything was just a white icon, they now have different colors. So our fires are red and our wind is yellow. Or I guess that's not wind, that's wind. I don't know. Pretty cool. I kind of like the white more, but to each your own. We've obviously got new organizers for our new cards. So new quests, I believe this is, these are quests into deep, the quarantine. These are new villains to choose from. Billy the Kindler. Here's our big rat guy. These are, I forget exactly what they are, but they're basically the henchmen. They're one of the decks you choose. So you choose a quest deck, you choose a villain deck, and then you choose, I guess, a henchman deck. I forget exactly what the name is, but these are new henchman decks. So the Crowl, the bird people, the Bray are the goats, rat people, just outlaws, and Lunarin. I don't know, crazy people? I don't know. And then our new heroes. So... All of our new heroes, Van Geyser, huh. And then all of our new cards for all the new stuff that we just saw. Let's go ahead and go through these real quick. 
I'll kind of slow down on the, the character cards because I assume that's what people are most interested in. But this is going to be almost exactly like the base game. So I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Here's one of our villains. Here's new lurkers, a lot of new lurkers. So again, lurkers are kind of just random monsters that you'll run into if you take too long during a mission. Got a new hero here. Hero card with her new stats. Starts with a staff and an ally. A cat familiar, it looks like. Obviously some sort of druid, just from the names of cards. So outlaws, some of our new decks to choose from, our bad guy decks. Uh, another villain, here's Vivian. And Rancidian, our rat guy. They should have decks in here somewhere, but there's our, our kind of main villain card. Here's one of our other heroes, Van Geyser, the horse guy. He is a bounty hunter, it looks like. Starts with two swords. Is he a witcher? He might be a witcher. I kind of like him. I'm not going to be up. I'm not going to lie. So more of our henchman decks or again, I can't really remember the name of that deck type. Uh, some extra feature cards to add in. So we got crates, the garbage heap, the cauldron and the cage. Another hero, Gronin. Starts with an ax and a shield. Looks like his main mechanic is, is gaining armor tokens. He probably would have been a dwarf if they had gone just generic fantasy. Let's see what else we got. Here's one of our other villains. Broderick Heston. Oh, interesting. And he starts with a minion, the Black Wolf. Here's our goat bad guy, Billy the Kindler, which is just a great name, it really is. You got new ally cards and then this is another one of our heroes here Ooh, his cards are a little messed up okay so interesting okay so he's got he's got an ally version so that's an ally card and then he's got his hero version so Layson looks like he's a, he's a werewolf. He can flip over. He's an elf werewolf. With a bow. A 
couple more. So it looks like we've gotten to our quests. So here are our quest decks. Again, this is one of the uh, setup mechanics is you're just gonna choose whatever quest that you are trying to do. And then obviously if you're doing the campaign mode, you will chain a couple of these together into a campaign mode. And I assume each of those quests have a certain sort of theme. You notice the one where it was, um, you're kind of breaking into a vault. So here is more henchmen cards for the rat people. Here are our villain cards for Vivian, who we found her card earlier, but there's her event cards or attack cards, whatever you want to call them. More henchmen. Here's again our villain cards for our guy we found earlier. More henchmen cards. More altar cards. So, so these are the figures we got: the altar of disease, the scorch, scorch altar, and the altar of greed. However, whatever mechanic it is that decides what altar card you use. They now got figures for at least three of them. And then I assume the kind of standard altar figure will just be what you use in general. And then our final hero, Blake, just all around average. Some type of mercenary. That... That art seems a little weird to me. His head looks way too big. Or her head. I mean, I... Their head is way too big in that picture. All right. So that's everything from the stretch goals as well as the first four. We actually somehow missed this. This is our uh, elf ranger slash werewolf hero. So for whatever reason, his pieces are not in the main figure box. Oh no, that's just the werewolf and that's our other hero. I wonder why these two weren't in the main box. Anyway, that's it for the stretch goals and the first four. We will look at the runes of Arkinspire next. So we've unboxed everything at this point. Actually, we haven't unboxed runes of Arkinspire yet. I'm going backwards and kind of included this. So this does have runes of Arkinspire content in it. And I want to add this just for a very simple point. This is our card organizers that we got in the base game and then in the stretch goals. And for holding the cards, it's actually really nice. It works out really well. I've already mentioned that you are not going to be able to sleeve cards and have them fit in here, but you can see here I have all the heroes in this one organizer here, along with a few things at the front, but mostly just the different heroes from you to choose from. And I'll do the same in the other one with the other cards that we have available and everything does fit. So in that regard, it works really well. The problem I'm having is that it seems to me that this void, which is here underneath the cards, which is also in this one underneath the cards, appears to be the only place they expect you to put all the tokens that came in the game, which first of all, is really inconvenient because you're going to have to basically clear out all the cards to get to the tokens and there's no real sort of organization available, but also because with just the sheer amount of tokens, they are not going to fit. And there is no room in the boxes really for these tokens, unless you, you know, put 
this many tokens into three or four bags so that it'll sit really, really flat. And that's just something I wanted to mention because this game does look interesting to me. I do like Dungeon Divers, but that's a real kind of serious oversight on their part is that there's, there's no accommodation for all these tokens. You're gonna need them all in order to play the game. Anyway, that's just something quickly that I wanted to say. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up just so you can see what it looks like before we move on to the Runes of Ark Inspire expansion. So you can see now we've got everything in and it all really works well. You've got everything color coded so you can easily see that these are heroes. We got a few extra things back here. We've got all our quests here and then you can see where the color changes because that is our, our henchman decks and then with our villain decks back here and then a few little extra things back here. These are our encounter decks. One thing I did notice is I've got no divider for this, for the search cards, which isn't the end of the world. I can just tuck them in right here. But for cards, this works unless you like to sleeve, in which case you're gonna have to figure something out. But really in terms of the all the tokens, this wasn't really well thought out. And finally, the last thing we have to unbox for you today is the Runes of Ark Inspire expansion to Alter Quest. Again, none of this changes the basic premise of the game. It's still a cooperative dungeon diver for one to four players, 30 to 90 minutes. Just more content, more stories. So here we have a new campaign book. So we had the first campaign book in the starter box, and now we have our second campaign book. We've got just a short explanation of new concepts. We've got some encounter tiles here. There are some secret boxes in here. Uh, so content that you're not supposed to look at until you get to that part of the story. Uh, if you're interested in that, hang around because uh, I, I don't particularly care. I'm gonna take a look. I wanna see. Here are our, our encounter boards. They are double-sided. So four for the price of two. And then we've got just one container in here. We've got some extra little organizers for our cards. We'll deal with that later because I'm having trouble with it. Got a big, I guess that's a minotaur. It's kind of hard to tell what's on his head there. Maybe a golem. We'll have to look for that card. This is almost certainly a new villain. That guy's got villain written all over him. A new terrain piece. Open crypt, never a good sign. And then it looks like three new monsters. Got a ghoul. Skeleton. And then a ghost. All right, so let's look at our new cards. There's something else in there. Oh, just extra silica. Our new cards here. So we've got a new monster type or skirmish card or henchman. I, I always forget what the name of these decks are, but the profaned. Again, that's just gonna include all these new monsters that we've been looking at, as well as some event cards specific to them. So our shamblers, our wretches, revenants, and then some, some traps some additional event cards. We've got some new features, the coffin and Cesara's Chosen. Interesting. Each enemy in this room gains one armor token. If no enemy in this room, each hero. Oh no, that's not a good thing. That's not good at all. All right, 
That's a very bad thing. Okay. Let's see what we got here. What is all of this? Oh, so just some new, some extra little cheat sheets that we saw in the base game. New equipment. Always like new equipment. I like finding stuff. So as far as I know, there is no um, a merchant or shop in this game. It's all stuff that you find. Into the Arkenspire. That's a new quest. So these are quest cards and we've got our little explanation here. Every quest comes with a setup card and on the other side it tells you the rules, basically how to win or lose. The Thane of Nathander is our new villain. That's our guy we saw earlier. Scheme card. And then once he's out on the board. Runes of Arkenspire. So these are campaign cards, I believe. We've got some new lurker cards. Let's take a quick look at those. Those are just going to be our new monsters, basically. We've got our Rune of Arkenspire cards. So there's going to be some spoilers in here for the quest. Um, I'm just going to go through them real quick. If you really care, you can always pause. And then our last deck of cards in here. We've got the Ark and Hold. I don't know what these are. This is an encounter. Oh, this must use the uh, new encounter boards. So these must be specific encounters you have in this campaign. Same with this one, Grave Disturbances. In Trouble. And Camp Ambush. So these come with setups just like quests. Yeah, so they're essentially similar to quests, except using the encounter boards instead of the main board. Interesting. All right, so that's everything in the Runes of Arkenspire box, except for these little, you know, secret boxes. So if you don't want to see what's in the secret boxes, uh, that's all we have for you today. But if you're interested in secret boxes or you don't care about spoilers, let's let's take a look. I'm interested. This one's pretty heavy. It might have a thing in it for us. It's got some. Ooh. We got a new, what would that be? That is a new hero. Very cool. All right, I wanna see what she does. Let's see what our hero, new hero does. Why would you hide a new hero from us? We like heroes. Search the Lurker deck for the Revenant card and put it in your threat area. This is your prisoner. Wow. Interesting. Starts with shackles, of course. And Arkan keys. I'm interested. I like it. I don't like that it's hidden in a box, but she looks cool. And then box one. Uh, I don't think that's going to be another hero, unfortunately. Uh, whoa. Let's see that. I guess that's a terrain or a feature. Let's see. The first altar. Oh, that's a new altar. The name might have given it away. The first altar. Roll each altar die in the altar pool, showing a rune that matches another altar die. Hmm. Interesting.
I don't necessarily think those need to be in a, a secret box. It's not like it's giving away storyline, but I like them. Interesting little additions. All right, so that's everything we've got for Alter Quest for you today. That was the base box, the stretch goals, the Runes of Arkinspire expansion, as well as the first four character pack. 